Hip spine syndrome is a distinct syndrome where both hip and the spinal problems are occurring in concert or in tandem or together. Many patients suffer with this syndrome because the basic pathophysiology behind both entities are very similar. When these two entities occur in tandem or in combination or in some degree uh, overlap each other, it can become a large conundrum for us orthopedic surgeons, mainly because the hip problem and spine problems can overlap in many ways and confuse the clinician as to what's causing what clinical symptoms to become the disabling problem. If you are evaluating a patient with hip osteoarthritis, their classic pre presentation is hip and groin pain. The patients start limping because they can't walk very far because the cartilage has been worn out and they're limping. Um, and it starts affecting their gait and pretty much at a certain time point, they're unable to walk very far at all. It's very disabling. Uh, patients with spinal stenosis or lumbar spinal conditions can also have similar walking difficulties. Their problems usually manifest with hip pain, but not in the front part of this hip, but mostly on the back or buttock part. So it's a different type of a hip problem. And patients with spinal stenosis will often get pain down the leg, sometimes below the knee. Now there's often neurologic symptoms like numbness and tingling and some weakness feeling, but believe it or not, so can hip patients. So the two can merge together and cause very confusing uh, uh, clinical uh, questions for the uh, practitioner. So if there is some clinical symptoms that are consistent with spinal stenosis and hip arthritis, one must be evaluated by both specialties so that the entity is picked up early and patient expectations are met. Rehabilitation and physical therapy are very important aspects of the global treatment process in patients with hip spine syndrome. In early evolution of the syndrome, where some patients get hip problems and spinal problems, not everybody will need surgery um, because the problems just haven't evolved to a severe degree as of yet. Therefore, in, that, in those group of patients, it's imperative to do physical rehabilitation, to do core strengthening, to do hip abductor and hip girdle strengthening to optimize their function so that whatever arthritis they have, they can function at a higher level. If the patients have progressive disease and they need to have surgery, then it's absolutely critical to have physical rehabilitation and physical therapy subsequent to their surgery, mainly because you have to rebuild and you have to re-strengthen those somewhat damaged muscles from the surgeries itself. So if the patient fails conservative therapies, then of course surgery is now something that has to be considered. So the first order of business, as I stated, is to make sure that the clinical entity hip spine syndrome is considered in the first place uh, by the treating uh, physician. Once it is identified that both problems exist, the trick in trying to get a good outcome is to identify which problem is causing the most problem first. That's because the hip replacement as well as a lumbar spinal operation are both in its own right somewhat invasive and to put both surgeries on the patient at the same time simultaneously will be exceedingly hard on them functionally to recover from. So we generally do one first, followed by the other, perhaps three to six months later. All depends on how severe the problem is. The innovative treatments that are offered here at the Brigham and Women's Hospital for this hip spine syndrome is the very fact that we are in the forefront of not only public awareness, but also of academic awareness of this entity, because many centers 
are so subspecialized that hip surgeons only see hip problems and spine surgeons only see spine problems. Um, what our department, as well as my interest specifically in this uh, uh, clinical entity, is that we have brought it to an awareness where all the faculty are now fully aware and engaged. So uh, the patient expectations of this surgery or this entity is met more fully in a comprehensive manner.